Hi, I'm Rich with Inside HPC. We're here at ISC 14 in Leipzig, Germany, and I'm here with Steve Hammond from NREL and Nick Dubay from HP. And we're here today to talk about the uh, HP Apollo. So congratulations are in order, I guess. Yeah, it's awesome. Thank you. Okay, okay. Steve, you're one of the first uh, customers with the National Renewable Energy Lab. Well, what were you, what were your goals when you set out to, to uh, acquire a new system? So we had, uh, first and foremost, performance issues. Um, so we wanted a high-performance compute system. We had asked for, we had an open procurement, and we wanted at least a petaflop of high-performance computing. Um, we have very demanding applications, and more and more our mission of, of driving innovation in energy efficiency and renewable energy technologies requires uh, leading-edge high-performance computing systems to do that. Um, so the other aspect was we also had efficiency requirements and that led to a requirement for liquid cooling um, because that provides for a much more efficient uh, data center. Um, so, um, so we had an open procurement and that was won by Hewlett Packard with their Apollo system. Okay, okay. did you have a target PUE number that you absolutely had to make and, and specs like that? So our facility, uh, we have a by contract a PUE of 1.06 and um, to achieve that uh, we provide uh, the according to ASHRAE classification, it's a W2 liquid cooled data center. So we provide warm water liquid cooling to the system. So the vendors that put uh, their systems in our data center have to be able to manage uh, liquid supply for coolant that's up to 75 degrees Fahrenheit. And because we use the waste heat to heat the building, we need at least 95 degrees Fahrenheit water back. So it sort of brackets the low end and provides a minimum on the high end um, for a, a holistic approach towards energy efficient computing. Well, so you're, you're, you're walking the walk, right, with, with, with your system? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, okay. So, so how did it work out with, with HP? Because at the time you didn't really have a product that would meet that, did you? Well, basically in having discussion, I've known Steve for many years, and having discussion with, with them, and I was like, it was so aligned with what we wanted to drive internally, but we really needed a, an internal driver to go after uh, those kind of technologies. Apollo initially was really targeted for a 2015, 2016 kind of a timeline, and when NREL's RFP came out, uh, we, we just went aggressively after that and internally it was the cell was basically guys this is what we want to do let's go at it let's go aggressively just drive 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 kind of a, almost in a skunk works mode to to be able to meet Steve's timeline because we couldn't see no better match than the Apollo project the Apollo platform we were driving and uh, Steve's requirements for the new ESIF. Yeah, yeah. So, so uh, I know a lot of my friends got to go see the system at SC13, right? And it was up and running. And they came back very impressed. And now it is what six, seven months later, and now you've got a product. Well, yeah, amazingly. So, um, on purpose, we wanted to deliver uh, Peregrine, which is the name of uh, the Apollo system at NREL, uh, almost a year before mass availability and volume production. Why? Because this was done completely out of process, just to to drive. Uh, uh, success as fast as we could, but going to production, we need to enable worldwide manufacturing, supply chain, uh, training of all of our salespeople and everything, because we really want this platform not to be solely super niche, super IN HPC on a handful of data center in the world. We want this to go in the data center of all commercial customers. Think like the big airliners, the car makers, financial uh, customers. We want this to go broad. So to enable that, we need to enable the, the big HP model. And that's what we're doing now. And that's why we're launching it today, available in the fall. Um, and it's orderable today now. Okay, well, well, Steve, you're one of the few people that can talk about hands-on experience. What's been your experience with this? Have there been, you know, have you found puddles in the morning? Any, anything, has it been working? No, we, so we've been working with HP for a little over a year and a half. So yeah. we've, we've had, um, from early prototype engineering prototype systems through the first delivery of a production system last summer. Um, so we've had 18 months of experience with liquid-cooled systems and we haven't had a single drop of water on the floor. It's, it's extremely reliable. Um, our, you know, it's exceeded expectations in terms of uh, what's it, what it's enabled us to do on the facility side. Um, we have a, a PUE for our last three month average is 1.05, so that's ahead of our, of our requirement for um, energy efficiency. And you know, our, our perspective when we look at, at data centers is we've got a fixed amount of space and a fixed amount of power coming in. 
and you can either, you know, so if you're inefficient in your facility, then you're stealing power and you're stealing dollars, operational dollars, that could otherwise be applied towards your compute side. So, so liquid cooling, you know, liquids are a factor of, of a thousand more efficient than air as a heat exchange medium. And so that, that saves on our OPEX. And then because, you know, space is a premium in your data center, you know, we have uh, 60 to 80 kW racks. So it's a very, very power dense and, and space efficient um, system. Whereas if we did traditional air cooling of 20 to 30 kW, we'd need three to four times the space in our data center to house the same compute capability. Just because you'd need a bigger plenum of air to take it on, wouldn't you? Yeah. Yes, yeah. you have to spread it out. Okay, okay. But, but even better, if I may add, than Steve's, um, uh, the ECF PUE of 1.05, in the winter, they're actually reusing the heat produced by the Peregrine system. In the winter, it actually becomes a furnace, right? And mm -hmm. so, where do you go after uh, really low PUE, like the sub 1.1 PUEs, how do you go beyond below one? Well, you need to reuse that energy. And that's what they're doing in the winter. So not only they're heating, uh, they're, it's what, 10,000 square foot of office? And we, we, the building is 182,000 square feet. The data center is a small portion of the overall research facility. So we've got office space for, for 225 people, um, plus a very large high bay and laboratory experimental space. So all of that space is, is heated with the waste heat that we capture. And it gets pretty cold in that area on occasion, as I recall. Yeah. Absolutely. We have, I mean, even, even in the summertime, we have cool nights. Yeah. Yeah. And so that, uh, that contributes to you know, reducing our overall operating expenses. And even better, the, 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 my favorite day is to walk in NREL yeah. is when there's a snowstorm. Because not only do they heat the building and the labs and everything, but there's, there's excess. So what they do is they're doing hydronic ground heating. So they're doing snow melting. So as you go into the ESIF in a Colorado snowstorm, there's people in snow and people in the ditch and snow all over. You're just walking on a dry path with smoldering snow on it. It's the coolest experience ever. Well, this, this, this just sounds like a great success, and I want to congratulate you guys. Well, thank you very much. It's been great uh, to work with uh, with NREL. We're really happy of that partnership, and uh, we hope to uh, keep it going like that for a long time.